No, 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 answered the trucks bumping into each other. Go on, go on. Before the driver could stop them, they had pushed Thomas down the hill and were rattling and laughing behind him. Poor Thomas tried hard to stop them from making him go too fast. Stop pushing, stop pushing, he hissed, but the trucks took no notice. Go on, go on, they giggled in their silly way. There's the station. Oh dear, what shall I do? he cried. He rattled straight through and swerved into the good yard. Thomas shut his eyes. I must stop. One day Thomas was in the yard. Suddenly he heard an engine whistling. Help! Help! A good stream came rushing through much too fast. The engine was James, and he was frightened. His brake blocks were on fire. They're pushing me, they're pushing me, he panted. On, 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 laughed the trucks. Still whistling, help, help, poor James disappeared. I'd like to teach those trucks a lesson, said Thomas the tank engine. Hunting, Percy was waiting for the signalman to set the point so that he could get back to the yard. He was eager to work, but was being rather careless and not paying attention. Edward had warned Percy, be careful on the main line, whistle to the signalman, you are there. But Percy didn't remember to whistle, so the busy signalman forgot him. Percy waited and waited. The points were still against him, so he couldn't move. Then he looked along the main line. Peep, peep! He whistled in horror, for rushing straight towards him was Gordon with the express. Oh, groaned Gordon. Get out of my way! Percy opened his eyes. Gordon had stopped with Percy's buffers a few inches from his own. But Percy had begun to move. I won't stay here. I'll run away, he puffed. He went straight through Edward's station and was so frightened that he ran right up Gordon's hill without stopping. After that he was tired, but he couldn't stop. He had no driver to shut off steam and apply the brakes. I want to stop, I want to stop, he puffed. The man in the signal box saw Percy was in trouble, so kindly set the points. Percy puffed wearily onto a nice empty siding, ending in a big bank of earth. He was too tired now to care where he went. I want to stop. I want to stop. I have stopped. He puffed thankfully. They approached the top of Gordon's Hill. Heavy goods trains halt here to pin down their brakes. James had had an accident with trucks before and should have remembered this. Wait, James, wait, said the driver. But James wouldn't wait. He was too busy thinking what he would say to Toby when they next met. The truck's chance had come. Hurrah, hurrah, they laughed, and banging their buffers, they pushed him down the hill. On, 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 yelled the trucks. I've got to stop, I've got to stop, groaned James. Through the station they thundered, disaster lay ahead. Something sticky splashed all over James. He had run into two tar wagons and was black from smoke box to cab. The fireman was ready when Edward arrived. The inspector saw the pole and the rope. Good man, jump in. We'll catch him, we'll catch him, puffed Edward. James was laughing. What a lark, what a lark, he chuckled to himself. Suddenly he was going faster and faster. 
He realized that he had no driver. What shall I do? I can't stop. Help! Help! We're coming. We're coming, called Edward. Edward was panting up behind with every ounce of steam he had. At last he caught up with James. Steady, Edward, called his driver. The inspector stood on Edward's front, holding a noose of rope in the crook of the shunter's pole. He was trying to slip it over James's buffer. The engine swayed and lurched. At last! Got him! He shouted. He pulled the noose tight. Gently braking, Edward's driver checked the engine's speed, and James's fireman scrambled across and took control. So the old iron caught you after all, chuckled Edward. I... Thomas simmered happily. Not long now, he thought, as he saw Henry slowly approaching. But Thomas's brakes were not hard on, and suddenly he felt his wheels begin to move. He tried to stop, but he couldn't without his driver and fireman. He tried to whistle a warning, but he couldn't do that either. The guard, driver, fireman and passengers were all stranded on the platform. Stop! Stop! shrieked Danny and Clarabel. But Thomas, with plenty of steam, kept on going. The alarm went out down the line. Stop the runaway! There, ready for action, was Harold the helicopter. The inspector had made a plan, and together they took off into the sky. At last, Thomas was tiring. I need to stop. I need to stop, he panted wearily. As they neared the next station, Thomas saw Harold land. They entered the platform slowly enough for the inspector to act. Judging his moment, the inspector scrambled into the cab and screwed the brake hard on. At last, Thomas stopped. Both he and the inspector were very relieved. Then they thanked Harold. Think nothing of it. Well, Harold, glad to be of service any time. Duck loved coasting down the hill, running easily with the wind whistling past. Suddenly, it was a guard's warning whistle. Hurrah, 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 laughed the trucks. We've broken away, we've broken away. Chase him, bump him, throw him off the rails, they yelled. Hurry, Duck, hurry, said the driver. They raced through Edward's station. But the trucks were catching up as fast as we can. Then they'll catch us gradually. The driver was gaining control. Another clear mile and we'll do it. Oh, glory, look at that. James was just pulling out on their line from the station ahead. Any minute there could be a crash. It's up to you now, Duck, cried the driver. Duck put every ounce of weight and steam against the trucks. It's too late, Duck groaned and shut his eyes. He veered into a siding where a barber had set up shop. He was shaving a customer. The silly trucks had knocked their guard off his van and left him far behind after he had whistled a warning. But the trucks didn't care. They were feeling very pleased with themselves. Thomas suddenly remembered. Silly stick in the mud, he chuckled. I'll show them. Driver said I could manage without him. I'll just go out. Then I'll stop and wheesh. That'll make them jump. Thomas thought he was being clever. Really, he was only moving because a careless cleaner had meddled with his controls. He soon found his mistake. He tried to wheeze.
But he couldn't. He tried to stop, but he couldn't. He just kept rolling along. He didn't dare look at what was coming next. There was the station master's house. The station master was about to have breakfast. Horrors! cried Thomas and shut his eyes. The house rocked. Broken glass tinkled. Plaster was everywhere. Thomas had collected a bush on his travels. He peered into the room through its leaves. He couldn't speak. Come along, Puff Percy. No nonsense. We'll give him nonsense, giggled the trucks. But they followed so quietly that Percy thought they were under control. Suddenly, they saw a notice ahead. All trains stop to pin down brakes. Peep, peep, peep! Brakes, guard, please. But before he could check them, the truck surged forward. On, on, they cried. Help, help, whistled Percy. The man on duty at the crossing rushed to warn traffic with his red flag, but was too late to switch Percy to the runaway siding. Frantically trying to grip the rails, Percy slid into the yard. Peep, peep! Look out! The brake van was in smithereens. Percy's driver and fireman had jumped clear, but Percy was stranded. He collected all the stone from the quarry and then set off back to the junction. Danger lay ahead. Now for our plan, giggled the trucks. Go faster, go faster. Slow down, called Thomas's driver, and applied the brakes. Poor Thomas stood dazed and surprised in a muddy pond as a toad eyed him suspiciously. Bust my buffers! muttered Thomas. Can you keep a secret? She asked the trucks. Yes, 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 they chattered. Will you bump me at the level crossing and tell no one I asked you? The trucks promised. But whilst Mavis was away, Toby arrived. He decided to shunt the trucks himself. The trucks decided to bump him anyway. They reached the level crossing and Toby's brakes came on. This was the signal for the trucks. On, 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 they yelled. Toby was away with the trucks screaming and yelling behind him. No one realised that melted snow had turned a stream into a torrent and the bridge above it was about to collapse. The rails were now like a tightrope across the thundering water. Stop! Stop! cried Toby. His driver fought for control. They came nearer and nearer to the bridge. The driver braked hard. Toby stopped, still on the rails, but with his wheels treading the tightrope over the abyss. What right has he to poke his funnel in here? They grumbled. We want Duck or Donald. Or Douglas. Look sharp, puffed Oliver. That's not the way to speak, hissed the trucks. We'll pay him out. Oliver heard nothing. The trucks moved smoothly at first, then suddenly Oliver felt them push forward. His driver applied the brakes, but they were useless against the surging trucks. On, 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 yelled the trucks. Oliver fought hard, but still they forced him on and on. At last, the trucks grew tired. I'm winning, gasped Oliver. But it was too late. Oliver lay, bruised and bemused, 
bunker down in the turntable well. Duck surveyed the damage. Hello, Oliver. Are you being a good, gracious engine? Beg pardon, of course, but we really don't like this sort of surprise. Peter Sam duly waited at the bottom of the slope for the loaded trucks. He never bumped trucks unless they misbehaved. But the loaded trucks couldn't see him properly. They thought he was a handle. The chance for trickery had come. Faster! Faster, they yelled. No, no, wailed the empty trucks. It's Peter Sam. But it was no use. Hurrah, hurrah, roared the trucks. Peter Sam shut his eyes. Beep, beep. Come on, Gordon. We're going to the official opening of the new station. Then there was trouble. As Gordon approached the new station, neither the driver or fireman could apply his brakes. Something had jammed. The driver reduced steam, but Gordon was still going too fast. Help me! Please! Ironshaft. When he arrived, there was trouble. The foreman spoke to his driver. The trucks are stuck on the mechanism. All they need is a good shove. We'll do it right away. Percy shunted back to where a large canvas barrier was used to protect his line from loose rocks. Percy charged at the line of trucks. Too fast and too hard. Oh no! gasped Percy. The trucks broke free but ran out of control to the mines below. On, on, faster, faster, the silly trucks yelled. Then there was trouble again. The trucks were still grumbling, and there was more of them than ever. You're much too small to pull all of us. We want another engine or we'll be struggling up the hill all night. All night, all right, you can puff and blow. But on that hill, you're still too slow. s, -s, -s, -s slow yourself, stuttered Percy. Temper, temper, giggled the trucks. <laughs> Percy decided just to carry on. Go to it, Percy, shouted the driver as they started to climb the hill. The trucks were still joking. Too slow, more power, here all night, tomorrow too. Be quiet, said Percy angrily. Then there was trouble. A coupling broke. Surprise, surprise, catch us if you can. Oh no, cried Percy. Percy's driver told the signalman, and the yard foreman told the fat controller what was happening. They're heading for the big hill. It'll slow them down, but they may roll back again, right into the village, said the foreman. Then we'll just have to stop them, won't we? said Sir Topham Hat firmly. The chase was on. As they approached the hill, they overtook the trucks. The fat controller and Bertie screeched to a halt and waited for them near the top. The hill slowed the trucks right down to a standstill. Then the men quickly put wooden blocks behind their wheels so they couldn't roll backwards. The trucks were now secured. Just then, Percy arrived. The trucks decided to carry out their plan when they reached Gordon's Hill. 
When they were nearly at the top, they played their tricks. Ready, steady, go, said the trucks, and they jerked at a coupling which broke. We're making your wish come true, Toad. Follow the leader, yelled the trucks. Toad was still in a state of shock, so didn't know what to think, and he couldn't ask the guard. He had jumped clear. Faster! Faster! As fast as you want! screamed the trucks. Suddenly, Toad found it all rather fun, but the fun was soon over. A crossing lay ahead and the gates were closed. Toad couldn't stop. Worse still, Toad now realised he was on the wrong track. There ahead was Gordon. The signalman changed the points just in time. On! On! Faster! cried the trucks. Suddenly, he saw James pulling a long, slow train. Yikes! Help! Save me! A quick-thinking shunter did just in time. What was that? exclaimed James. The signalman warned the station master at the next station. There's a runaway coming. We'll send them into the sidings. Help! Help! called Toad again. Toad saw some buffers. Those will stop me. But the points to the buffers weren't set. Oh no, I'm back on the main line. Meanwhile, Oliver was racing to the rescue. I must catch Toad, I must. Toad sped past Henry. More danger lay ahead. Men were working on a bridge, but they had been warned about the runaway Toad and his trucks. They diverted him onto old sidings, straight into a muddy pool. <coughs> Stopped at last. Peter Sam and Rusty often worked together. One day, Rusty held Peter Sam to a water tower. And once there, whistled goodbye. Peter Sam felt much better after his long drink, but the trucks were bored. Let's break away, they giggled. Their loads were heavy and the couplings old. One snap. Faster, faster, shouted the trucks. A sign read, slow, steep bends and ravine ahead, but the silly trucks never saw it. Then it was too late. Peter Sam arrived at the scene of the disaster. His driver sighed. This was our fault, we didn't secure them properly. We'll have to get help to pull them out. The next day, the sun shone. The quarry was filled with more machines. Suddenly, Rusty noticed something. Boulders moving. Don't be so daft, it can't, said Rusty's driver. But it could. It's rolling along our line. We'll stop here until Boulder passes by, said Rusty's driver. But Boulder was nowhere to be seen. Suddenly, oh no, it's behind us! Just ahead, they saw a small junction. One line went uphill. Boulder thundered past. Meanwhile, Scar Lowy was making his way up to the quarry. Then he saw Boulder. Yikes! Boulder was catching up to them fast, but they veered into a siding. We must warn the yards, shouted Scar Lowy. Yes, but how, called Rusty. 
rolled around at a bend and there ahead was Reneus. It's running loose, yelled Reneus. His driver drove him back as fast as he could. Yikes! Rather a smash than a squash, sighed his driver. At the yards, Percy was collecting trucks. Then he heard Boulder. Oh no, it's heading straight for me! High above them, all was not well. A long line of full trucks was about to be winched down the slope. They had just started their journey when some empty trucks became derailed. The winch groaned. Break it! Snap it! shouted the trucks. And they did. On, on, on! Faster, faster! they giggled. The snowbank and buffers will stop them, said a workman. But he was wrong. The trucks plunged into the ravine. Scarlowe and his driver heard the noise and looked up. Avalanche! they cried. When the snow plume cleared, there was no sign of Scarlowe. He was buried deep inside the high drift blocking the ravine. Out on the branch line, Percy was having trouble with trucks. Faster we go, faster we go, pull him along, don't let him slow. Help! cried Percy. His driver applied the brakes, but it was too late. He went off the rails at Bulgy's Bridge. Percy didn't know that earlier a leaky truck had spilled oil on the track. When he approached the chocolate factory, his driver applied the brakes, but Percy's wheels just skidded on the oily rails. Oh no! hooted Percy. Yuck! He groaned. I've never been this dirty. It was shiny and modern, and Thomas had never seen anything like it. He just couldn't wait to start his journey, but Cranky was taking his time. Hurry up, huffed Thomas. This is a special special. Cranky did not like being told what to do, especially by an engine. He became so cranky that he was careless with his hook. His hook knocked the switch, and the switch started the jet engine. And the engine began to whine. The whine got louder and louder and louder. Uh oh said Cranky. Before he could say anything else, the jet engine was rocketing Thomas up the track. Said Thomas. The driver tried to put on the brakes, but Thomas couldn't stop. Oh boy! The station master called ahead. Clear the lines, it's a runaway train. Signals were changed and points were switched. Thomas had never been so excited. Thomas flew by James and rocketed past Henry. And raced by Percy. They were amazed. Bertie was excited when he saw Thomas flying down the track. Want to race, Thomas? Beat Bertie? Never mind. No one had ever seen an engine go so fast. Gordon had no idea that Thomas was racing along the main line.
I am the fastest, said Gordon proudly. Hi, Gordon. Bye, Gordon. Gordon could not believe what he had seen. At last, the jet engine ran out of fuel, and Thomas was back under his own power. Duncan was so impatient, he became even more careless. I'll show that smelly diesel and those lazy steamers, he said to his driver. Careful, cautioned his driver. You're asking for trouble. And he got it. Duncan didn't notice his chain was tangled in the coupling of the truck in front of him. Suddenly, he was being pulled up the track by the empty trucks. Boots and buffers, he cried. It's got me. Duncan's driver jumped clear. Rusty returned to see Duncan being pulled up the incline. I tried to warn him, said Rusty. He never listens, the little diesel driver said. The chain pulling Duncan's trucks couldn't hold the weight. It suddenly snapped. Help! he yelled. Glug, 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 he said. Blug all my boiler. Duncan felt foolish and very wet. We'll show him, they giggled. He can't push us around. Arthur struggled over bridges. And he huffed and puffed through tunnels. He came over the top of a big hill. You can't catch us, laughed the trucks. Weesh! But there was trouble ahead. Duck had stopped at the crossing at the bottom of the hill. Arthur's driver applied the brakes, but it was too late. Squashed fruit flew everywhere. Arthur was upset. His spotless record was ruined. Reneus was still trying to think of something that would make the children's trip special. He didn't know that the linesman had forgotten to switch the points. Suddenly, Reneus was on the wrong track. Oh no, this line is closed for repairs. Bust my buffers, chuffed Reneus. Be careful, cried Rusty. The tracks are very bumpy. Reneus whooshed down the mountain like a roller coaster. The children cheered. Reneus puffed up the rocky ridge with all his might. His carriage clattered and bumped and bounced along behind. And the children ooed and aahed. Reneus chuffed and puffed as hard as he could. He steamed across the trestle bridge. He was going so fast the teacher nearly lost her hat. Reneus splashed under a waterfall. The children laughed happily. And the teacher covered her eyes. At last they could see the station. Reneus was very tired and worried. What would the fat controller say? Oliver was loaded and on his way. The snow was cold. It had frozen the points and diverted Oliver into the station sidings. Oh, shiver my boiler, cried Oliver. His driver applied the brakes. Is there a problem, Mr. Oliver? Yes! There is! That could have been a little smoother. Duncan started to speed up. Soon Duncan was going as fast as his wheels could carry him. 
His driver was starting to worry. So he tried to brake, but Duncan was out of control. He was scared. He had never gone this fast. People waved and cars tooted as Duncan sped by. Suddenly, a tractor trundled across Duncan's line. Look out! shouted his driver. Slow down! whistled Rusty. I can't! Duncan cried as he shot past. Elephant Park loomed ahead. Duncan's driver applied the brakes. But it was too late. The statue flew through the air. And landed 